Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have to get ready for a meeting. I also have been dog sitting all day. However, I did a recording. You see, it's 25 minutes, 9 seconds long. I'm going to suggest you get a pen and paper and you start writing things down and you pay attention. I promise you, you ain't heard nothing like it. Guarantee it. Go ahead, point it out, because ain't nobody brought it out like this. And I guarantee you I can prove it. I can prove it! So we're going to start the conversation on this. This is a legitimate conversation. Legitimate conversation ain't one of those pre-planned things. Pay attention. Beginning is a little garbled. Oh, by the way, if you hear some cracking in my speakers, it's not my cheap, well, it is a cheap uh, laptop. It's made by Apple. Anyway, that's right. I'm one of those people who's complaining about Apple. Everybody talking about how great Apple is supposed to be. Cheapest little speakers that they ever could have made. They put them on an Apple. Did they add some caramel? Caramel? Yeah, caramel apple candy stick. You they never have? Ladies and gentlemen, so I'm about to play this. You should be able to hear it. If you can't hear it, I don't, don't, don't even email me, text me, none of that. Oh, by the way, somebody made a intelligent comment. I didn't ask him for the intelligent comment. The individual actually talked about he knew how much I hated people. Sorry, dog is whining, so I got to come in here and seek the mama's outside. What are you doing way over here? What's what's over here? Sorry, all the dogs are asleep, and they, while they are sleeping, they are having a conversation with somebody. Uh, it ain't me, but I don't know what they're talking about. Anyway, uh, the mama's outside. They're in a closet area with a fan blowing on them to keep them cool because it's almost 100 degrees. So, well, it's 96 inside. One of my thermometers is saying 99, but the other one is showing 96. So we're going to split it right in the middle and say it's 99. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'm going to mute myself and let you guys hear this. I got some other work I need to do. While this is playing, I got to do some packing of some boxes. So give it a moment, okay? Here we go. What well, I'm going to repeat to you, and I want you to just from this point on, don't say nothing. Don't comment nothing. I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to read okay. it again. I'm recording the call, and you're going to share this. Why? Because y'all haven't been reading the statute correctly. The code is only prima facie evidence. Yes. It is not law. It's only evidence. It's not even evidence of law. It's just evidence. They don't even tell you anything other than it's pr prima facie or prima facie. You know what prima facie means? It's not real. It, it's, it's, it's rebuttable. Not really. It just means at first sight. Love at first sight. Okay. Yeah. It, 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 you know, you look different than when I saw you at first. It only appears to be law. It's not law. It's right. prima facie. It's only by appearance. It says at first appearance. See, it appears to be law, but it is not law. So 12 U.S.C. 411 says... Federal Reserve notes, and you notice how that code is supposed to be taken from the statute. What statute is that code taken from? I'm reading it to you. Let me go okay, ahead. Now, let me ask you a question. No, I told you don't interrupt. I did say that at the very beginning. Uh -huh. I just said, listen. Okay. Listen. Okay. When such circulating notes, and Federal Reserve notes are circulating notes, are issued against the security of obligations of the United States, the amount of such circulating notes shall be equal to the face value of the direct obligation of the United States so deposited as securities. And when issued against the security of notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers, acceptances acquired under the provisions of this act, which is 12 USC, the 400 section, because remember it's 401, it says Section 401, 12 U.S.C., 
400 section is what we're reading right now. Are you the on page 78? I'm reading the Federal Reserve Act. Oh, okay. You have to ask. Section okay. 401. Okay. At paragraph 18, subparagraph 6. Just one big paragraph. When issued against bills of exchange, bank of acceptances, draft notes acquired under the provisions of this act, the amount thereof shall be equal to no more than 90% of the estimated value of such notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and bankers' acceptances. Now, you remember it originally said any notes, but it said such notes. Well, what notes are the, is it talking about? Well, first, it talked about circulating notes, which are Federal Reserve notes, to be circulated among the member banks. But then it talks about drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, and then we found out that at the very beginning of the section, it says any notes. Now, we're going to continue. Such notes shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank procuring the same and shall be in the form prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury and shall be receivable at par in all parts of the United States for the same purpose as national bank notes, for the same purpose as national bank notes notes. Our notes are the equivalent of national bank notes, and they are used for the same purpose as national bank notes. Bills of exchange, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, and then we found out that at the very beginning of the section it says any notes. Now, we're going to continue. Such notes shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank procuring the same and shall be in the form prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury and shall be receivable at par in all parts of the United States for the same purpose as national bank notes, for the same purpose as national bank notes. Our notes are the equivalent of national bank notes, and they are used for the same purpose as national bank notes. Bills of exchange, drafts, bankers' acceptances, are to be used and received for the same purposes as national bank notes and shall be redeemable and lawful money of the United States upon presentation to the United States Treasury or at a bank of issue. That's Section 411. What they don't include is the rest of this part of the Act. So what you're reading when it says the said notes, notice it says the said notes. This doesn't have the word said anywhere in it because that's the code. The code was written by the Revisionary Council. You have to go by statute at large and the congressional record. The congressional record, Congress specifically said that the money shall be issued to the bank in return for government obligations, notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, and trade acceptances. That was congressional intent. Our bills of exchange, our legal tender, banks, bankers' acceptances, drafts, and notes, those are legal tender. Why? Because not only are they receivable, but they are redeemable. And they are to be used for the same purpose as Federal Reserve bank notes, or as they say, national bank notes. We have not been looking at the code correctly. But I've been yelling to people. I told people I did the our style money order, even though uh, Patrick Devine had done his own money order before me. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I told people when I did the video, I said I looked at it and I said I used to do fake checks. And A for B, man, that's nothing but a check. I said it has all the elements of a check which is why we take the coupon and we convert it to a check. And I said, but you can't call it a check. Why not? Because a check has to be backed by funds in an account. So what can we do? We call it a money order because there are no regulations for money orders. Money orders were invented by the, uh, what's that, post office. But, you know, three, three, um, three you used to see 3-104, Defines money, uh, 
checks as being drafts. It doesn't matter. It doesn't okay. matter what UCC defines anything as. UCC is not law. Mm-hmm. I ain't saying that. I'm only talking that. Of, I've already told you. I'm only dealing with what the law says, not what the prima facie junk says. Mm-hmm. Because according to them, statutes at large is evidence of what the law is, not evidence prima facie, but prima facie evidence of what the law is. And then when you bring the legislative intent, the record of Congress, you provide a preponderance of evidence that cannot be defeated. Okay, so again, I'm going to do it for you again. When you're looking at Section 411, that's not the whole statute. And it lets you know it's coming from this act right here. But when you read the act itself, it lets you know that what is constituted as at the very beginning, it says circulating notes. Now, if you look at 411, it says are to be used as making advances between the membered banks. Right. Okay, that's the circulating note. It circulates among the banks. That's what they're saying, but they're not coming straight out and telling you it's a circulating note. So this starts off when such circulating notes are issued against the securities of obligations of the United States, when such circulating notes are issued against the securities. So guess what I'm about to do for you? I'm about to go to that part in the congressional record. And I'm going to read to you about their circulating notes and what they mean by circulating notes. Section 401, which is Title 12, the sixth paragraph of Section 18 of the Federal Reserve Act is amended to read as follows. Sorry, I just had something pop up on my screen and I'm about to send it backwards because I didn't ask for it. All right. Upon deposit with the Treasury of the United States of any direct obligation of the United States or of any notes, which you don't realize this includes Federal Reserve notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances acquired under the provisions of this Act, not the Uniform Commercial Code, not the United States Code, not Jimmy or how he cracks corn because nobody cares. Under this act, under this paragraph, that's where you operate. You go outside this paragraph, and that's where you lose. Because it specifically says under this act, and then later it says under the, this paragraph of this act. So we are operating under just this section only. Don't care about nothing else. But it goes on to say, any Federal Reserve bank, making such a deposit in the manner prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury, I'll be entitled to receive from the controller of the currency circulating notes in blank, duly registered and countersigned. Now, what did Congress mean by circulating notes in blank? Do you have any idea? Yeah, they gave, they're giving them Federal Reserve notes that don't have a stamp on it. The section I have that tells you, that each bank is 12 of them have to have their own stamp, you know, A, B, C, D, E, and all the things that you see on the Well, on the, on the, technically, on the note. technically, yes, but technically, no. Let me tell you what Mr. Stiegel had to say about those circulating notes in blank, because there was a discussion as to that aspect of what was going on with the Congress. You can find this in the congressional record. Give me one second. Page number 80. It says this. The third section, this is the left or the right side of the page, halfway down. The third section deals with how the banks are to be handled under this authority, how bank assets are to be frozen. All bank assets are frozen. All of banks in America are under receivership. Assets are to be frozen and deals with the question of limited receivership and receiverships. The last section of the bill provides for the issuance of a new money. Uh-oh. Well, what's this new money? Let's uh, see what the Congress said. It says, I'm in a little loss in the hurried way in which we had this bill read. 
to understand just how the new money is to be handled. I refer to Section 401, which reads, upon deposit with the Treasury of the United States of uh, all contract obligations of the United States or any notes, and I love that thing about all contract obligations, because it says obligations of the United States. Now we know what it means. It means contract obligations, i.e., the contracts we have with the United States with the arbitration clause. They're going to hate me. And so forth. Under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations that are deposited as the security and gold for the reserve notes are placed in the hands of the Federal Reserve agent. See, what you don't understand is your notes, your drafts, your bills of exchange are the substitution for gold. They are what back the new money. Right. Now I'll read it again so that it's clear. Under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations that are deposited as the security and gold for the reserve notes, Federal Reserve notes, are placed in the hand of the Federal Reserve agent. Now I would like to ask the chairman of the committee if this is a plan to change the holding of the security back of the Federal Reserve notes to the Treasury of the United States rather than the Federal Reserve agent. Mr. Stiegel says this provision is for the issuance of Federal Reserve bank notes, circulating notes, and not Federal Reserve notes. And the section back of it is the obligation notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bank acceptances outlined in the section for which the gentleman refers. The thing that backs the Federal Reserve notes is our junk. But we have been doing it all wrong. And if you look at Section 411, and when you look at what it says, does said notes, as a matter of fact, I have to go there while we're talking. So give me a second to pull up my browser. I definitely have to go there to see if Section 411 is in the plural or singular. Do and let me ask you, yes. face it, I need to ask you this one quick, though. It's on the Federal Reserve note, is the R on reserve large or small? We don't care. Yes, it does. There, no, there's a difference. it doesn't. You don't get it. It doesn't matter what the stupid note says. It's not about Federal Reserve notes. It's about No, no, stuff. I know. But I'm telling you, what's in the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, reserve was a small R. It in 1933. Matter. You don't get it. They amended the stupid act. We're going by this paragraph. We're not going by 1913. I told you, this thing says you have to stick to this paragraph only. Well, 1913 was the Federal Reserve Act. It doesn't Act of matter. Act. It says who sticks to the provisions of this paragraph. Okay. We don't care yeah. about what happened in 1913. None of that matters when you rely on that paragraph. You rely on that paragraph, nobody can say nothing. You start jumping all over the place, you lose the protection of the act. That's what I've been trying to tell you. That's why I keep saying you don't get it. I thought you said all acts have to do with a date. Let me do this again. There's a song, and it goes, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters at all. It's done by Lana Ritchie. None of that junk mm -hmm. matters. What matters okay. is that paragraph. That's why I'm recording this for you. Go back, listen to it a couple of times. The only thing that matters is our junk is redeemable and receivable in exchange for lawful money. That's what you need to understand. Okay, I told you I was going to put in 12. Sorry, I didn't put the 12. Oh, would you get out of the way? Nobody asked you to be enabling nothing. No, I don't want to enable that. Sorry, got a Mac and an Apple. 12, USC 411. It's already right here in my screen. And it says the issuance of the said notes with an S. So guess what? It includes all notes or the any notes that are referenced in that very same paragraph because this is taken from that paragraph. So what I am trying to say, we've been looking at section 411 and 412 and 418 wrong. We've been thinking that it was specifically talking about Federal Reserve notes. And it's not. 
and I can prove that it's not talking about specifically Federal Reserve notes because I'm going to read the actual section of the code it speaks. And if you look at the uh, amendments to this act, you'll see that it will give you 1933. But I'm looking for 1933. And you know what? I don't see 1933 here. Oh, that's right. Because they did the provision amendment in 1934 in January. But take, take a listen. Federal Reserve notes to be issued at the discretion of the Federal Re Bo um, Board of Governors and the Federal Reserve System for the purpose of making advance to Federal Reserve banks through the Federal Reserve agents here and after set forth and for no other purpose are authorized. Now pay attention. The said notes, they're not talking about Federal Reserve notes anymore. They're not talking about Federal Reserve notes. When they say the said notes shall be obligations of the United States and shall be receivable by all national and membered banks and Federal Reserve banks for all taxes, customs, and dues and shall be redeemable in lawful money. So you saw what I just read, correct? Goodbye. Now pay attention. I want you to pay attention to what they said. Such notes shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank procuring the same and shall be in the form prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury and shall be receivable at par in all parts of the United States for the same purpose as national banking notes and shall be redeemable in lawful money upon presentation to the United States Treasury or at the bank of issue. So let me finish reading section 411 so that you'll understand where they're getting it from. And shall be redeemed in lawful money upon demand at the United States Treasury or the Treasury Department of the United States in the city of Washington or at any other Federal Reserve Bank. So the actual code, these are the ending words of this, prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury, shall be receivable at par in all parts of the United States. And then it says, and shall be redeemable in lawful money in the United States, of the United States, upon presentation to the United States Treasury or at the Bank of Issue. This is Section 411. Mm -hmm. the, only, the only problem is, and that's our problem, is we are not looking at the record. We're looking at a code that only appears to be what the actual so-called law is. So stop looking at 411. Go to code. And now you can challenge the code as being inaccurate. Now you can challenge, rebut the code, because the code is not the congressional intent, and it does not go with the act itself. Now, the last thing I'm going to say, and then I'm going to stop the recording, and then we can talk, okay? Okay. All right. The first thing we need to do is we need to get to – I'm looking for a phrase, and i got to find it, and I know it's there because I just read it a moment ago. No, what I have to do is I have to go back to the actual paragraph because – Oh, yeah, that's right. It, it is in this paragraph, but I have to go back to the actual act to read it from there because you need to be able to hear it from the act as to the way Congress was saying it. Upon deposit with the Treasury of the United States acquired under the provisions of this act, which is the Federal Reserve Act, then they let you know a little bit more. for the performance of any function which the Treasury or the control of the currency may be called upon to perform in carrying out the provisions of this paragraph. You see, we don't want to deal with any other paragraph. We don't want to deal with any other code. We want to stick strictly to this paragraph. Why? Because this is the paragraph that gave us our power. The only problem is, we haven't used it. We've been going by stupid codes. Even I was going by Section 411. And the reason why I called you was to explain that we're supposed to be using our own junk. Our own junk is legal tender. When they tell us it's not an acceptable form of tender, they're lying. And we're accepting it because what they're doing is they're giving us a presumption, telling us we have to rebut their junk, and we're not throwing, wait, according to the Federal Reserve Act, this is legal tender. 
So let me tell you what happened, and then I'll stop the recording. A young man did a consult with me, and I told him, because he asked me, he said he had some issues and he needed to know what to do, and I told him to do exactly that, to write them, because they told him that it wasn't an acceptable form of gender. So he wrote them back and said, well, actually, according to this, it is. According to this, it's an obligation of the United States. According to this, it's lawful communication or a financial aspect of things. You know what they did with his account? He also told him it was a security deposit. He sent me a screenshot and everything of his account. They not only set out the account, didn't close it, zeroed it out, and credited the account with a $200 security deposit. Now, why would they do that if he, all he did was send them a stupid money order? Yeah, why did they do it? I, I'm because not he relied on a stupid paragraph that I just told you about. Oh, we're not giving them the law. We're just telling them to do this. We're just sending them junk. We're sending them all this paperwork saying all this other junk that is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. The only thing we need to do is rely on the congressional record, the congressional act. However, that paragraph is directly associated with Presidential Proclamation 2039. That paragraph is directly associated with the Banking Act of 1933 and the Federal Reserve Act as amended 1933. We're not giving them that superior evidence, which is a preponderance of evidence to which they cannot overcome. There was nothing that they can prove. Any, nobody, not even... I don't care what type of judge you put together, they can say whatever they want. They can say, well, that's one of those arguments. I don't give a – I asked for a jury trial. That's a matter for a jury to decide. I didn't ask for no judge to decide this. Well, judges decide matters of law. You better show me where that law is. A jury is supposed to determine the outcome of a controversy, and you just created a controversy by saying that that doesn't matter. Thank you. Now we're going to go to a jury because that's exactly what lawsuits are for. You just documented a valid controversy. I don't give up what you say about your opinions and your decisions. We're taking this before a jury, and we're going to have them look at the facts and the law and let them make a determination according to the law because there is no law that says that only judges get to determine the law. And the way you kill them with their – we are the ones that make a determination on the law. The way you kill them with that is you bring up the fact that ignorance of the law has no excuse. So a jury has the exact same right as anyone else in this country to be able to look at the law and to see if it's being applied correctly. Why? Because they are experts at law, the same as a judge. Because ignorance of law is no excuse, then everyone is supposed to be an expert at law. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I'm going to stop the recording. I'm actually, since I ain't said nobody's names, just yelled at people, uh, I'm going to play this so other people can hear. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am black. I mean, I'm back. And I do need to bring something to your attention, something that you may not have picked up on. But it took him a minute to pick up on it, so let's see if you're going to pick up on it. Give me a second, got to see if my voice is recording, because I hit the mute button. Uh, I just was chit-chatting with the puppies while listening to myself. Now, the volume may not have been extremely high, and my volume, as a matter of fact, you see it's going there, so I'm okay. So you can hear me. That's all I wanted to check. The first thing is, these things said that these notes are only to be used by authorized agents. Ladies and gentlemen. We've been looking at this junk wrong. This, oh, by the way, this is not the law. This is only a code. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and show you the law. I can get rid of that. Been showing it to you throughout the video. So let's let you know. Federal Reserve notes are to be receivable at all banks. So let's go ahead and see. The notes shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank. It shall be in the form prescribed. We can skip that junk. 
it says, and shall be receivable for the same exact purpose of national bank notes. What notes are they talking about? Well, let's find out what notes Section 411 is supposed to be talking about. Security of notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers, acceptances, acquired under the provisions of this act, the amount of these notes shall be equal to not more than 90% of the estimated value of such notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers, acceptance, so deposited as security. So those shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve and shall be redeemable in law money of the United States on presentation to the Treasury or the issue. So I want you to pay attention because you may not be getting it and I, I don't expect you to. Because it's, it's right there but you didn't see it. Because you should have. They shall be redeemable and lawful money on demand to the United States Treasury or at any other Federal Reserve Bank. This one says bank of issue. Uh, excuse me, when I say this one, I am talking about this one. What you all need to pay attention to is that your drafts, your bills of exchange, your banker's acceptance, your promissory notes, pay attention, shall be receivable at par in all parts of the United States. They are legal tender. For the same purpose as national bank notes, otherwise known as Federal Reserve notes. What you don't realize that I read to him in that conversation is the following conversation that was had by Stiegel and his compadres. Because Mr. McFadden is asking a lot of questions. Oh, this is the wrong one. This is page 83. We don't need page 83. We need to go back here because we started from the bottom. Now we made it to the top. I hope y'all going to get this because I'm tired. I've been trying to tell y'all, but y'all don't be getting it. It's like talking to a brick wall. Burning down a house. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, 36, 24, 36. What a winning. No, I'm not going to do any of that. It's like talking to a brick wall, not a brick house. Ladies and gentlemen, upon deposit with the Treasurer of the United States of all contract obligations of the United States, do you, these people don't even know the ones who have these contractual obligations with the United States, that they're supposed to be depositing it with the Treasury. Ain't that interesting, huh? Or any note including Federal Reserve notes, ladies and gentlemen. You got to understand, any notes means any notes. Under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations, under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations, pay attention, under the Federal Reserve Act, obligations that are deposited as the security and gold, so your junk is gold. Your junk is a security. For reserve notes are placed in the hands of the Federal Reserve agent, deposited with the Federal Reserve agent. Now pay attention, let's find out because we need to know what's the status of these notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and bankers' acceptances. This provision is for the issuance of Federal Reserve bank notes, circulating notes, and not for Federal Reserve notes, circulating notes. And the security backed of it is the obligations notes draft. The security backed of it, the security, pay attention. The security are your notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances. Outlined in the section to which the gentleman referred to. What section? The one we're relying on, section 401. Some of you, man, you're going to get it. Some of you are never going to get it. I wish En Vogue was here. Um, let me say something else, ladies and gentlemen. There are a lot of ignorant people out there trying to second-guess the information I'm giving you. They're trying to second-guess the fact that you must discharge all of your debt. 
that is what the June 5th Act said. If you want to use the new money, which is your notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and bankers' acceptances, yes, you never realized that, did you? But it says it's to be redeemed in lawful money. Yes, redeemed in lawful money, which is credits. Federal Reserve notes are not lawful money. So you're not redeeming them for Federal Reserve notes because Federal Reserve notes has to be redeemed in lawful money. But remember, according to this, your junk is even at par or even par with their junk. How do we know? Because it tells you right here, where's my Federal Reserve bank notes? Shall be redeemable at par in all parts of the United States for the same purpose. Same meaning exact. Same process, same purpose. As are national bank notes. Federal Reserve bank notes are national bank notes, ladies and gentlemen. Federal Reserve notes are legal tender. That means your junk is legal tender according to this paragraph, according to this section. You need to pay attention. Now, I'm putting this information out there for all of you. Because I keep telling you, I told y'all when they said, hey, we're going to, with you one more time, that I told them to leave me alone. Said if they left me alone, I'd stop giving you information like this. I just watched the video where some person is sitting up there telling you that everybody who talks like I do and talks about the stuff that I do ain't never did any of it. And I've already told everybody from day one to day three that the reason why any of it has never been done by me is because I'm too busy sitting up here trying to help y'all. But that's okay because, see, I sent my money order to the Treasury. Now, wait a minute. Wait, hold on a minute. Some of you guys are just sending out money orders to people, and you're just sending out bills of exchange to people, and you're, you're, you're trying to pay for this and pay for that. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't just... Tell them I want lawful money. <laughs> the system doesn't work that way. Can't just say, hey, here's a $50 billion uh, bond. I want lawful money. It doesn't work that way. You actually have to be engaged in commerce. Remember, you have to be participating in helping the economy. That was the deal. You saw the video where the guy said, it's all fake money. Because it was supposed to be fake money. This was Monopoly. But the deal was you would participate in the game. You can't land on uh, jail. Oh, and if you watch the video of the guy talking about money and he does the TED uh, thing about money and uh, money creation, and he talks about his children and how they play Monopoly, well, he didn't appreciate it because the children invented their own rule. They would literally bail their brothers and sisters out of jail. The father didn't give them that information. They realized they could bail each other out of jail. Ladies and gentlemen, these notes are legal tender. I keep telling people they should be able to post bail. If you look at the new money order, and it will be up today. I took it down because I'm making some revisions. Uh, that ain't it. Dang it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, look, I want to tell you, the gentleman who... I did the video about, um, I want to let y'all know something. He wrote this letter. This is what he wrote to his bank because he watched the video of me telling you guys to start using the regulation. Okay? 401. And so he did it. He says, this note is in response to the letter dated May 17, 2022, the previous reference to the legal document entitled Conditional Acceptance for Value and Counteroffer Claim Proof of Claim and Tender of Payment Offering. Then he gives the contract number. This is one of our contracts. Ladies and gentlemen, he put used that code, and then after he puts that code in, he tells them, as with reference to the above, you are to, prov uh, you are to provide that you do not operate or follow such principles of law and do not honor legal tender payments offered as the law has prescribed to the address stated above within 14 days. Just that simple. See, what he's doing is he's creating a contract. That's, that's what he's doing. He's doing an amendment to the contract. And he's putting them in bondage, so to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, he sent his letter. 
which it's not a lot, but he just sent this letter, and he had a telephone conversation. They credited his account, and because he used Section 401, and you'll see it because I saw it a second ago. Where are you at, Section 401? I just saw you. It's, come on now. Computer freezing up, holding up. Holding on. It's very hard to do when love is gone. And that's no lie. He used this section. He documented to them that he made a security deposit. And that it was deposited as a security. They credited this account. And now his account reflects, and get this, in addition to having discharged the account, an additional $200 in security deposits. So when you got those people out there, ain't nobody out there challenging me that's got any skill. Ain't nobody out there challenging me that knows anything about law. You see, you're going to challenge me. You better come at me with law. You better come at me with facts because I'm going to show you where I'm getting my stuff from. That's especially when it comes to scripture. You can't challenge me on scripture because to challenge me on scripture because I only use scripture is to challenge the scripture. What makes you, well, you know, never mind. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of this. I got a meeting that I have to be at in 45 minutes. So I got to get ready. Got to go. Y'all take care.